oh my gosh. Welcome to the show, Will Roberts, of course. <laughs> Filmfestivallive.com. Uh, let me tell you something. The, the reason why you're looking at this and you're probably thinking, wait a minute, Will. You're usually on top of the hour. Um, hey, it's life and Zoom and uh, live streaming. So we have our guest today. I'm very excited, but I'm, I have a very small window of opportunity to talk to him, Jonathan, from Big Apple um, Film Festival in New York. Very excited. But uh, I'm going to probably have them come back on to get a full scope of what they're doing. Uh, I'm going to launch right into it. Normally, you know, I'd blather on about something about why, you know, actors need to work and do their own work. And that's why we're doing film festival stuff and produce your own shit and blah, 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 whatever. We'll get that at the end of the show. But uh, without further ado, let's take a look at who we have here and look come to the film festival to dance during that promo <laughs> welcome to the show of course jonathan lip film festival founder and director of big apple uh, uh film festival welcome brother hey thanks a lot thanks for having me really appreciate it thanks yeah me i me too and i know we had a bit of a glitch getting ourselves hooked up but uh along with being a professional actor and a live stream host i am also a tech guy so uh, we just show people how to push it and move it along. But uh, let's get right into it and let's talk about Big Apple. Why would you even consider having this much um, uh, responsibility and changing your life? And I know that uh, it, it takes up a probably 24-7 job to do all this. What possessed you? <laughs> uh, you know, I've always been a big fan, supporter, champion, advocate of independent film. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in general, even beyond film, I'm just a big fan of people doing things on their own without waiting to be accepted or selected or chosen awesome. or discovered and all that kind of stuff. So I've always kind of felt that way. And, um, but I've always been a big movie fan. So sort of that mentality of do DIY, do it yourself, uh, coupled with film, I've always been you know, just been a big fan and supporter of independent film. And I've always had the utmost respect of folks who created their own films and self-distributed. And, you know, I just love that stuff. I love those stories. And, and yeah, I'm just a big fan of it. Does that come from just out of your, let's dig a little deeper into uh, to Jonathan. Does that come from a entrepreneurial, a business mind, or are you previously or still an actor going, I got to figure this situation out. What What's the reason behind that though? I think uh, when I was much younger, I was always sort of waiting for people to discover me or select me, whether it be in film as a filmmaker or even in other aspects of life. And then as I got older, I sort of realized that it just wasn't a, a realistic route for me mm -hmm. uh, and for many people. And so I started sort of flipping the switch and saying, OK, you know, how can people do things on their their own and, and and be their own advocate and sort of build their own empire, so to speak. Right. Yeah. And, you know, OK, so that's a good point. So technically, you've been in this sort of realm industry uh, of, uh, of, I guess you want to say, not even Hollywood anymore. What the hell? Let's just call it uh, filmmaking and creative world. Um, how long? How long? When, when did you start? This festival actually started in 2003. Right. So we started with, um, I believe that first year we had like 17 or 18 films show over the course of two evenings. Uh, and, you know, it it did well. There are, there were other people that agreed with me. They loved independent film and they really loved the idea of being able to present it themselves to their audiences. And uh, and so, you know, we just we just kept forging ahead. And ever since then, I've just been a supporter of, of indie film and, 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 and entrepreneurs and, you know, everyone in that world. Creative. Uh, so, how many now? How many films? For oh, instance? now, 
oh, oh and now, you know, we'll show maybe on average 100 films at a, at a festival. Of course, many of them are shorts, you know, they're yeah. all featured. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> but, War and peace. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. A large percentage, of course, are shorts. But yeah, about 100 films in total. That's yeah. that's awesome. Okay, yeah. so let's talk a little bit about um, how tech savvy are you with the, in regards to filming and for any kind of production like that. Me personally, I mean, very very minimally. You know, just from being around it, I know of certain things, and you know, I myself can do. You know, I do basic editing. You know, myself using, uh, you know, pr pretty basic. You know, software. Right. Um, you know, things like iMovie and things like that. But um, generally speaking, when it comes to tech, uh, if I ever need tech, for example, you know, videography at the film festival itself, or if we need a festival trailer cut or, you know, anything like that, you know, we hire, you know, yeah. uh, go to people to come in. Right. You know. Well, okay. So you're actually a good person to ask this next question mm -hmm. to being someone that isn't like, oh yeah, I got four red cameras and I'm always shooting and <laughs> editing on DaVinci. Uh, so yeah. my question is, uh, 2003, I think you said, exactly. or yeah. Okay. You started, how's it different? I mean, look, I can tell you cause I started a uh, hundred years ago, uh, 40 years ago doing this. And I started with, you know, working at Fox and CBS as a, a Fox kids club host and shooting with beta SP, which now is, you know, archaic and tape and so on. And, but I watched the industry because I've been, you know, become very good at uh, all of my uh, different technology. How has it changed since the beginning? Um, are you seeing that uh, more opportunity for filmmakers? Are you seeing better quality? Are you seeing, you know, uh, people that you're having to educate more? I would say the main thing is, I, I you know, I think there's, uh, geez, so much more content than ever before because it's so much easier and cheaper to make a film. You can make it on your phone now. So there's so much more content, right? Yeah. With more content, of course, you know, comes a lot more competition, right? So uh, it's much more difficult, I would say, to get your work seen. Um, however, uh, if you have a specific niche for for, ind for an independent film, like, for example, a documentary maybe on a specific topic, let's say, or sure. I don't know, a specific band, a rock band, let's say, or something <laughs> that you're that have fan base, something like that. Uh, yeah. I, I would think, uh, you know, is sort of a way to get out there. But I think in general, there's so much content that it's become a lot more competitive. And of course, you know, the streaming world is also, there's so much content now on these streaming platforms. It's like yeah. insane. Uh, and for filmmakers who are looking for, uh, you know, monetary success and financial return and to be able to recoup their costs, of course, it's much more difficult now, I would think, because... You know, you don't if you if you are successful in getting onto a streaming platform, we've had many filmmakers that have been on Netflix and Amazon and Hulu and all these things. Uh, you know, very often you don't receive a large licensing fee unless you oh. have some big stars in there or received a tremendous amount of press through some, you know, uh, you know, huge film festival or well-known talent or something like that. Um, it's very difficult to receive a large licensing fee. Uh, Amazon, if you are streaming through Amazon Prime, you get a, a very small amount very small, you know, per stream per hour. Um, so things like that, I, I would, th I would say, just the amount of content has become, and it, it's great to get your work out. You, there's so many more, sure. so much more opportunity to get your stuff out there, but to recoup the costs, of course, is also a lot more competitive. Right. Well, you know, one of the things, a good point you mentioned, I've done uh, like two Netflix films. I did one in Brazil for 46 Day called The Killer. And I learned a lot about uh, that whole thing because the director, um, uh, Marcelo, uh, basically said, yeah, you know, you're really kind of just doing this in the beginning. They took the film. They basically helped sort of pay, but, you know, not really. But what you're really doing is you're getting credibility because we all know now, like, look, hey, if you want credibility, you shoot a TikTok video you get a million hits people go oh you're awesome you're an influencer or if you get on a netflix then potentially you could take that and and you know piggyback onto uh you know a hulu or something like because you know uh if you're in this business i think you're a person that might be able to agree with this if you're in this business um to be a millionaire <laughs> you're more of a comedian um and unfortunately it just doesn't work that way uh and and, and that's okay because you got to realize that filmmaker actor creative you're in it for the long haul and you just love the fact that you're looking up on the screen 
thank goodness to places like Big Apple um, that allows you to see your work and go, wow, people are digging this. I'm going to keep going. Because we didn't have that, you know, uh, uh, 50 years ago or even 15 years ago, really, to the masses. And now you can go there and, and get yourself a little pat on the back and go, cool. And it didn't take me $14 billion to do it. So uh, that's kind of awesome. Let's wrap up your section here. I wish I didn't have to. I wish I had more time. Can I get you to come back again? Yeah, that'd be cool. Thanks. Tell yeah. me when the festival is, or I should tell our audience. Yeah, uh, we uh, we have our festival coming on November 1st to the 5th. It's taking place um, at the AMC Theaters in Times Square. Uh, so it's a really cool location. Um, so that should be super exciting. So that's in November. Uh, yeah. And then we also do some other events during the year, like July 28th. Uh, we're actually having a summer shorts series. It's one evening of shorts. So that should be a fun event. Um, Great. Yeah, uh, but, you know, the festival itself is taking place November 1st to the 5th. So, uh, yeah, we're totally, you know, looking forward to it. Should be should be a good time. How's the, uh, um, you, obviously you have a lot of uh, submissions, but how long before you close off submissions? Is that done yet? Uh, the submissions for that festival, for the November festival, uh, actually close in September. Oh. Uh, yeah, so Get you have, a, anyone who is interested, um, you know, you have up until September. Um, yeah, so you can check out BigAppleFilmFestival.com for any info. I love it. All right, Jonathan Lip, I really appreciate you coming on again. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed that we don't have a little bit more yeah. time, but uh, oh, we'll catch you again. And by the way, I don't know who you look like, but I'm sure people go, oh. you know, you look like, I get Daniel yeah. Craig sometimes, but you look like, oh, what? Yeah. I forgot his name. You look like an actor. Really? Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, you should consider good, good you, Unless you have a, if you have a real job, you should consider that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, I've always kind of thought of <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching Jonathan Lip and, of course, uh, BigAppleFilmFestival.com. Check it out. Go there. And if you have a film, please submit. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. And, you know, this is a great chance for you to get out there, get a little pat on the back, and continue what you're doing. Thanks for coming on the show, Jonathan. I cool. really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. You bet. All right. All right. Hey, so folks, uh, that is the end of the first show. And I wish um, we had a little more time with Jonathan right now, but we will come back with Jonathan. I'm going to twist his arm and uh, we'll show some more, maybe some of the festival uh, highlights that they did from last year. And, you know, again, till September, you can submit your project and you can go from there. And, and I love it. Just do it uh, really quickly. I'm going to end on a note that I want to tell everybody about. And here it is. Um, actors, I, I talk about this all the time because my show originally was called actingupradio.com. And uh, I, I've always tried to do something what we call guerrilla marketing as an actor because, look, hey, standing in line for all these, you know, cattle calls, not really cattle calls, but now the submissions to they're kind of like cattle calls because I don't know if you know this in the industry, people, but uh, before COVID, you would submit for something on breakdown and you would have an average, ready for this, 2,500 people that would submit for the same role. Well, now because of COVID and we're all in our own little self-taping areas, <clears throat> it's 4,800. So get your shit in quick. Because if you don't, I'm sure casting directors and directors are like, I can't look any more of this stuff, please. And try to be creative. So here's how I was creative. And I want you to watch this. And then we're going to come back and into our next half of the show and our guest, Tyler. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to him. But I want you to watch this, everybody. Check this out. See if I can find it. There we go. It looks just like this. Hey, thanks for clicking the banner. Now, I know you're dying to know what it is that makes a successful casting office or director or production. And the answer is actors. See, you can have a great script, great casting director, a director, producer, but here's the problem. You always need good actors. To be or not to be. But let's face it, there's way too many of us. And we can't market to you, which is odd considering that they call it show business. And that means that there's business in the show. We can't call you. We can't send you an email. We just submit to the breakdowns like the other 4,800 that submitted to you on that casting call with no action-packed pitch letter, sales letter, and all we do is stand in line and remain quiet. Let's be honest. Lines are for Starbucks, not for careers. If I still have your attention, I want you to watch this next 46-second video. Now, don't go away because there's a quiz after this.
Detective Gennaro, I need to speak with Rex Wilson. Rex is already out there on the speedway for his practice run. You know what I mean. Now let me see your shotgun. In here, cool it down. <laughs> Just like your old man, huh? Is there a problem, soldier? I'm asking you a question, Lieutenant. Running in clown shoes. This is gonna be fun. Time! I hope they need more time. That wasn't so painful. And I even saw a couple of you laughing. So if you like what you saw, operators are standing by. Yeah, well, yeah Robert's an A-lister great. for sure. Oh, you want to poke him? <laughs> That's my agent. And if you didn't like my approach, well, I'm Daniel Craig, and I hope you enjoyed this commercial. All right, so that's it. Uh, end of the show. Uh, try to be clever. Now, I know it, that'll probably piss off a lot of people. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, you can stand in line in Siberia and hope that people are going to pick you and, and see you. Or you can get involved in film festivals. You can create your own thing, which dovetails me into the second half of the show. I'm going to end it with this, our close, and we'll be right back after this with our next guest. my glasses i can't see anything uh hey welcome back to the show normally i would break this but we had our first guest of course uh <laughs> which was jonathan from big apple film festival i'm gonna jump right into this because i know my next guest has to get out of here soon hold on i gotta get my glasses so if I don't get my glasses i'll be looking and going like this a bunch uh ladies and gentlemen very excited to have this young man on the uh our show and i'm gonna bring him in here right here really quickly but first i'm gonna show you a quick little demo if you loved her so much, then why did you cheat on her all the time? I always came back to her. Yeah, and every time she couldn't find you because you were out fucking around, she would come to me, worried about you. She knew what was going on, but she didn't want to believe it. And that's when you stabbed me in the back. No, no. Just, just shut the fuck up and listen. A dog will always find a stick. People will tell him, look, Fido, this won't work. But you will stupidly reply, this time will be different. That famous argument. Now what did daddy do? I mean, I figure that you wanted to kill yourself anyway. Those are your words, not mine. So why not take advantage of it? Why not, why not blackmail your dad or something? Shoot. Oh, here we go. Sleep well. No mom died not knowing your dirty secrets. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll, oh, whoa, there you are. I have to bring you in. You are number three. Stand by. Wow. Uh, okay, so first of all, how can I go any farther past that scene? That was intense. Tyler, uh, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. I know you got to We got to uh, boot scoot and get you moving. I love the fact that your last thing had that cowboy accent, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. And actually, I do have a little bit more time. My uh, my phone conference got pushed back by half an hour, so I definitely have some more time to hang out and chat. That's me doing my cabbage patch, saying, "Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyway, I love it. Uh, welcome to the show, by the way, and I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I looked at uh, your stuff and. I guess I could say this just outright and say that you have a new fan. So, oh, um, thank you so much. And, and, and one thing I want to say, the reason why I'm saying that as well is because you're not just a, a, a filmmaker, actor, you're an entrepreneur, you do a lot of different things. And, and you know, as well as I do, because you've been doing this long enough and my statement that you're an entrepreneur and you're a, you, you know, you, you, you care about causes. Um, you're doing this uh, the right way, which is you've put everything into it. So let's start off with that and say, give us a little Reader's Digest version about Tyler. And by the way, please pronounce your whole name, Tyler Hampong, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. You got it perfectly. It's Tyler Hampong. 
how, how do you do, do people call you? Do you have a nickname other than your? It does, it does get confusing. It does get confusing because Ham Pong is the full last name. Um, oh. It was a it was a whole mix up in immigration. My grandfather's name was Pong Ham. They mixed it up in an immigration, gave him the first name Joseph, which wasn't his first name to begin with. But then that's the kind of history of uh, the etymology of our name. But, that's funny. Uh, yeah, it's it's Tyler Ham Pong. Yeah. Do you have a, do you but, have a, um, a nickname? Uh, sometimes people call me Ty or T, but okay. that's about it. Yeah, that's better than but, me. My dad, my dad used to just call me asshole. So we're good. Uh, <laughs> hey, asshole, get over here. Uh, and I, and I was, I was reluctant um, in showing your demo a teeny bit because you got some four letter words, but I made sure mm -hmm. that we turned off the uh, tw uh, 15 and under uh, knob on our different platforms. By the way, just so you know, folks, we are streaming live on our Facebook Live, which has got 17,400 people, actors and industry people. Boom. We're on our um, YouTube channel, which has 10,000 something subscribers. Our, uh, our Instagram, I'm sorry, not Instagram, our uh, uh, Twitter, which I have, which has got 72,000 on it. And really, we're going to give this man so much press because of what you're doing. So let's get into what it what you're doing uh, did you start off and say to yourself gee i want to do this and start in high school theater give us a little background yeah that's pretty much where i got my passion and my start um i was interested in the entertainment industry beforehand when i was younger but in high school is when i started getting into theater and um it was a really life-changing experience for me it pushed me in that direction actually the name of my production company kill the pig productions is that. a reference to my high school theater because they used to talk about um a show that they did uh before i even joined but it was lord of the flies so we had an exercise that was based on that first show where they would recreate that last scene with piggy where they would chant kill the pig slits throats billets blah 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 so recreating that last scene so it's a reference to that but it's also you know i have ham in my last name so i had to get a little reference to to a pig in my production company um so that's where where that name came from <laughs> well just but, you know, uh, i have a seven and a ten year old and my boy my seven year old loves pigs so i'm not sure i'm going to turn them on to your film production company yet but uh, <laughs> he loves pigs. But someone just asked on the uh, on Facebook, which by the way, we'll get Facebook, Instagram, I mean, all different people logging in and asking questions. A, a very intense scene. Uh, that one's a misspell. But I I would know that word because I can't spell worth a crap. But uh, are you also a production company? Yes, you are. And what was your decision to become a production company based upon the fact that you went? I'm tired of waiting for other people to do shit for me or what's the reasoning behind it? Yeah, that's the exact reason. Um, as a mixed race actor, uh, especially when I was uh, growing up and, and first getting into the industry, there aren't, there weren't a lot of opportunities and there aren't a lot, a lot of opportunities for people that don't fit within a certain mold. Yeah. So I would find myself going to auditions where, you know, I would either be in a room full of Caucasian people or a room full of full Asian people going out for a role that neither of them were necessarily uh, compatible for my type. Right. So it, be, right. it, it started to become where I would write uh, roles for myself and create opportunities for myself. And um, and that, that blossomed into a production company. And uh, I've been... Um, I, I've been the owner of this production company since 2010, wow. so I've been, uh, yeah, been in it for is, the long haul. Is it sole? Uh, is the sole purpose of the production company? And I ask this because here I am in my studio, and I, when I get bored or I need some extra cash, I jump on Fiverr, which I hate saying because I'm a, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm Ficorse. But the point is, is that you know, if you need work, you need work. And by the way, I'll say the statement, I bet you can say the same thing. This is, this ain't my hobby. So, you know, we, if we don't make the rent then, or the mortgage, then no one's going to do it for us. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, trying to, uh, overcome those hurdles, uh, are you just doing your own stuff or do you do any corporate? Uh, what's the, what's the primary focus of the production company? We um, are 
our specialty is actor services. So oh. we do headshots, audition right. taping, actor right. reels. Um, but you know, we've been approached by corporate and we do corporate. I just did a, a green screen corporate video, um, a week ago or so. And, um, I'm really open to hearing what the, uh, what the client, what the artist is envisioning. Um, right, right now we just partnered with a, uh, with a, uh, TikTok, um, uh, influencer who's yeah. uh, expanding his YouTube. So right. we're uh, we're helping him with his uh, YouTube curation and videography for YouTube and writing for him. So it's um, we're open to a lot of like I love working with with inspired people, and that's really the main thing the thing that I'm looking for for a collaboration. Um, you uh, are, you have a crew of people. I've seen a lot of your stuff. Let me ask you the film. Uh, I won't tell any casting directors or directors, but for instance, the hostage scene that we saw is that a um is that a pig production or is that was that a real film i mean it's a real film but i'm saying yeah. that, you, you know what i mean uh because it right. was legit it looks awesome it was very well done you did a great job and everything was well crafted and edited so is it an actual film festival or a production or a tv thing or did you went did you go I really need to play a bad guy and I'm tired of not playing when I'm going to do it myself. Oh, well, thank you for, for the appreciation. Um, I can't take credit for it for Kill the Pig Productions, but uh, the filmmaker is a very good friend of mine. His name is Jonathan Coco. And the actor that I'm uh, opposite of is another great collaborator of mine who has appeared in a bunch of Kill the Pig production stuff. His name is Christian T. Chan. So uh, yeah, it is within like our same our same friend group of collaborators. Once you like, once you have a group of people that you like working with, I feel like it's it's uh, easier to to come together and just throw a project yeah. together if you're just feeling creative. Yeah. No. 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 I mean, look, I I, I actually live in. You know where Temecula is? Yeah. I live yeah. in Temecula, so I. It's very funny because you know I I work a lot and I go back and I, before COVID I was going four or five times a week either shooting or you know uh, auditions or callbacks and then when COVID happened they went oh I'm really sorry you have to self tape I'm like because you know that's two and a half hours each way three and a half on the way back but my point is is that I uh, I know you edit you shoot you do it all right. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. So, that's so you get the calls like I do, like, yeah, uh, yeah. What, what's up? What's up? Hey, Will. Yeah. Um, I got this idea. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh, it's an idea. And, um, you know how you write? Yeah, I write. Yeah. And, and you can shoot it and you can edit, right? Yeah. Um, your, your stuff's amazing. Well, so we could work together. I'm like, and what are you going to do? <laughs> oh, well, you're going to show up and, and eat the food on craft services. Um, but it has allowed COVID. I want to talk about this. COVID has allowed people like you and me in the industry to really kind of rise above and be the top of the, uh, the cream of the, of the crop of these, of these creators, because we're not sitting here going, well, what the hell am I going to do now? What happened when COVID happened? And did you sit there going, what now? What'd you do? Yeah, well, I mean, it was really, um, it was traumatic for a lot of people, uh, for sure. Um, for me, when I went right when the uh, pandemic hit, I had just signed on to be the 72-hour uh, shootout coordinator for the Asian American Film Lab. Wow. And if you're not familiar with this competition, it is a uh, global competition yes. where hundreds of people submit films and they make a movie in 72 hours for the chance to win mentorships with uh, executives at ABC, NBC. Um, uh, we, in my year, we had prizes for masterclass subscriptions and final draft. So when the pandemic hit, um, I not only was organizing this festival for the first time, but I was shepherding this festival into a virtual kind of realm, which was uh, new for, for a lot of festivals at that time. Now, a year and a half later, we've become accustomed to uh, virtual screenings. But uh, back then it was, in its, it was in its infancy. Nobody was really all that interested. Yeah. Um, so it was, um, it was a lot of, it was actually a lot of help to, uh, distract me from what was happening 
COVID wise to, to yeah. put all my effort into, um, into building, uh, 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 the judge panel and getting uh, people to submit and getting interest from people who are, who are in a very depressed, unsure state as it is and yeah. encouraging them to be creative, even yeah. if it's just, even if they don't know how to edit or film like me or like anybody who, who like has, you know, a DSLR, I would encourage them, you know, this is the isolation edition. You can shoot it on your phone. You can, yeah, you can like cast your, your dog or your cat or your mom in this film. And like, we expect it to be this kind of do it yourself project. And yeah. I encourage that. And, um, and, and I, then you had it, to find, yeah. and then you had to find people that had decent internet connection. Uh, because <laughs> one of the, yeah, I mean, seriously, I, I started during this thing, a company called, and here's your host.com, which is basically a live stream company. Cause you, as you can see, I'm pretty good live stream, lower thirds and the whole nine yards. And this is one of the things I'm doing with film festivals is because it surprises me. Your, your shot looks great. You know what you're doing. You got a neat little Fresnel in back of you. It's all good to go or leak or whatever that is. And the bottom line is, is that, um, but most people I speak to in the industry, there it looks like they're shooting it in their bathroom and that's why i kind of came in you know to the rescue on this going let me tell you a little bit at least get yourself a 4k blah, and do a little something something and it's only going to cost you as you know it's drastically changed since you started that i can shoot this 4k i can shoot with my uh whatever they're called uh, the leds leaner and neener or whatever it's called my fold-up screen and i look like i'm network and the bottom line is is that it's really changed and COVID did allow us to one force people into a situation like we're in right now. Like I used to try to do interviews and you have a podcast. I used to try to do interviews and I'd interview people like Lana Vinker, David Rappaport, and I'd go, Hey, I want to do a Skype version. And they're like, Oh, I don't get on camera. I'm like, <laughs> but, but, and this is like six years ago. And I'm like, oh, I know, but I'm going to be like cutting edge. You know what I'm saying? They're like, I don't do camera now. It, it's just kind of stupid that you know that people wouldn't get on because it's all of it. Because you can save this as a video, you can export it as an MP3, and you know, it, and it's a live stream. So it, it's really changed a lot. Let me ask you: Are you seeing that with the actors that you're dealing with? Because you're in an industry. Uh, a part of the industry that says, um, yeah, if you want a demo or a headshot, you're, you're a one-stop shop, Tyler, and um, we're going to help you. But how much education do you have to do in this? As, a, as an actor approaching us for what they need? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, as an actor, you have to be informed for, uh, for what the casting director, what the agents, what what the industry is generally looking for. So it, it's good to uh, come into a consultation with us, having an idea of what type you are and uh, what type you want to portray. Because a lot of the time, the actors that come to me, um, they're, they don't have uh, a strong type or they're, they're the, the, the thing is that people, are typing them a certain way and they want to be typed the way that, you know, they see themselves. Yeah. And if you don't have, if you don't have the footage that shows you as the good guy, then nobody's going to hire you as the no. good guy. No. So that's where we come in and we help them craft a custom scene for, uh, for, for their reel that portrays them the way that they want to be cast. You started a, a while back. And in the beginning, when you started, I want to ask you if the actors, one, their discipline has changed. Uh, and number two, uh, back in the day when you started, it's not that far back, but still long enough to know that this was not something that people were, were using and, and they didn't really grasp it. How tech savvy do you think your actors are when they come in? Are they, are they more trained on where they're, where they're hitting their mark? Or are they, are they embracing how to, uh, I guess, embrace the camera? Is it different when you started? Or like I said, do you have to go, uh, you know, why don't you try to do this and that? How's your tech savvy parts doing? It's a mixed bag, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I mean, like, 
I am surprised sometimes at how many people come in and don't know how to, when, when they shoot it, don't know how to, to get it from their phone to their uh, computer if they want to edit it. Or if I send it to them over WeTransfer or Dropbox and they're trying to download it on their phone, but it's like, it's desktop only. I mean, there are a lot of these like small things that you just have to kind of hold the client's hand through uh, if they're not too familiar with it. But yeah, it is definitely a mixed bag. But with cell phones, I think with cell phones, people have been um, becoming a more, more, more self-reliant for their yeah. auditions. Absolutely. But like when they come in and, and we do their self-audition or their self-tape, I mean, we have you know, lights and, and, and uh, professional HD cameras and like we take care of a lot of, the, uh, a lot of the stuff that normally kind of plagues the actor's mind in the background. So, um, well, so we, I, we enjoy doing that. Yeah, and I and again, I commend you because you know there's a billion places in LA, New York, Chicago that you can go to get a headshot. Is it right? You can go and get you know into a self taping place. Are you doing it right? Um, you can go in and have people create demo stuff. I've seen a lot of that, and so have you. And a lot of that stuff that people go in and produce, you go, holy god. Um, no one's going to take that seriously. So I do commend you that you've managed to one-stop shop that, and uh, you know that's really awesome. Hey, we're going to take a small break. Can you stay for a little bit longer? Yeah, totally, for sure. Okay, good. I want to take a small break and talk about something, and then when I come back, we're going to ask you a question about something that's trending sort of in the news and what you talked about and who you are. So hang tight really quickly, and I'm going to do a little uh, mention. Here we go. So uh, it, one of the people in uh, Los Angeles, California, by the way, uh, for MovieRentals.com, good friend of mine, David Hill, he has a company he's been doing for like 15 years where if you're doing anything cop, medical, military related, uh, David, I get, the uh, cool thing is, is that David and, I, David and I have started producing a thing called Hollywood TV Cops, which is kind of this like funny little behind the scenes thing because we're always on a set, which is kind of cool um, because we don't have to worry about the props and the, and the setting. So I bring my 4K with me and I shoot some little fun little bits and just, you know, ad lib it. But the cool thing is that if you need anything in the Los Angeles area or even around the United States, for MovieRentals.com, uh, David's got SWAT gear, police gear. Uh, we have all the cops. I'm one of them. I, you know, I'm obviously a weapons person, and I've trained police and cadets before. So, if you're looking for any of this stuff, locations doesn't really matter. Cop places, uh, hospitals, we have it all. I say we because he's a friend of mine. So check out this uh, website for MovieRentals.com, and that is my plug for that. Let's come back in. All right. Uh, we're we're talking with Tyler Hampong, and he is a filmmaker, and an actor, and an entrepreneur, and uh, a really nice guy. Um, and um, I want to ask you: uh, when I said trending and uh, topical, uh, you're an Asian American, um, mm -hmm. and not only did we slap you with COVID, but we slapped you with the fact that we were with, and I'm going to say this out any uh, regard, we were stuck with a president with his head stuck up his ass. And unfortunately, what happened was he labeled something that should have been labeled uh, generically a, a bad way, which created a very bad problem for Asian Americans. And, um, you know, I, I kind of get I, I get a little upset because I spent 20 years as a political and social humorist, i.e. Will Rogers style. And when I see what happens to our society, our people, because we are a, a mixed bag of awesome people, and I see uh, people on certain sides of the aisle blaming and pointing because they're ignorant, I, I relish and uh, I honor being able to talk to people like you, Tyler, and ask you, um, how have you been handling this? And have you had any, I guess it's a dumb question, have you had anybody um, treat you badly because of, of your origin? Yeah, it's a, it's, uh, thank you for acknowledging that and bringing that up. It's a very, um, there's, there's a lot to unpack in, in this subject. Um, I personally haven't experienced as much uh, hate during the pandemic as a lot of my friends or colleagues might have. Um, but I have heard a lot going on and um, 
with with the uh, with the Asian American Film Lab. I was able to uh, to hear a lot of people's experiences, and a lot of people shared their experiences with COVID and anti Asian hate in their films. And um, during the time, it was also uh, the height of the uh, social justice justice movement, and there was a lot of uh, Black Lives Matter protests happening at the same time. So uh, a lot of the films that were submitted to the Asian American Film Lab were uh, very topical and right. um, and uh, and it was very insightful to to see all these perspectives and cathartic as well to, right. to see that people are having these same experiences and people are willing to share them. Um, I think like we definitely need more representation on camera and behind the scenes for for not just Asian Americans but people in general but um, there's a there's a big like push to to have diversity on screen, but it's what's also important is getting the diversity behind the camera. So you have diverse writers and diverse showrunners who are uh, respectful of of diversity and not just treating it as a color by number um, uh, drag and drop kind of uh, situation. Um, I think that you know there definitely needs to be the representation behind the camera in order to get that represent that authentic representation in front of the camera and those authentic stories. Well, you know, that's a very good point. And the thing is, is that, uh, you know, look, I'm, I'm that demographic. I'm that demographic that for many, many years, um, we just went, I don't know what you want us to do, well, how you want us to change the world. Uh, because you know, I'm I am not going to say middle aged because Hollywood might find out, but uh, <laughs> not an ingenue anymore. But the point is, is that you know, luckily I'm not. Even though I'm cowboy, I'm not cowboy. Uh, but the fact is, is that um, Black Lives Matter has had a really good big stage. And I grew up in the south side of Chicago, okay? And my father, my grandmother, my mother, my everybody would just be telling horrible, horrible ethnic jokes all the time. My uncle would call me from Chicago and go, hey, Will, I got a great joke for you. And I'm like, this is like killing me. But, you know, that takes uh, a lot of time to for that to die off because those people are still here and they're voters. Um, but one thing I will say about Asian American uh, uh, demographic is that you still, in my opinion, don't have quite the voice that Black Lives Matter had uh, has. Um, and, uh, and you're right about uh, diversity in film. I mean, look, we went through, I mean, we're, we're, my demographic, we're really bad people. And I don't mean that to be. And that's not, no. I mean, no, I'm just saying. No, no, no. I mean, I'm talking about the actual people that are bad, not me, and not there are yeah. wonderful people. No, I'm saying that that we have been the cowboys in the black hats, and for the longest time. And now it's great that the consciousness, as a paradigm shift, going. It's not okay just to cast all this all the time. Hey, am I suffering? Yeah, I don't get the same amount of calls, but ebb and flow and it's all good in the hood so with that being said i would like you to give a little advice to um fellow um uh, asian americans out there going son of a bitch i don't see enough out there for me what can i do how can i do it tell me any movement tyler i can do can you give us that please a thought mm, yeah i, I mean I like hate to put you on the spot i hate to put you on the spot but i have a no i mean like for, it's it's a lot of the same advice that it's pretty much the path that I took that I, that I was talking about earlier about if you're not seeing the opportunities for yourself that you want to see, then you have to create those opportunities yourself. And I get that it can be, uh, it can be expensive. It can be difficult to, and daunting to film your own content, write your own content. But as I said before, uh, Filmmaking has become such has has globalized so much with the with the advent of cell phones and camera phones, and people are able to make content uh, so so quickly overnight. Even on TikTok, people are um, are becoming celebrities overnight for creating Damn. sketches, Damn. <laughs> right? And it's 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 a new form of 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 uh, of storytelling, but it's it's 
it's definitely uh, uh, user friendly. So um, there's no reason not to put yourself out there that way. Don't yeah. wait. Don't wait for the call. Don't wait for some. Don't wait for your agent to call you. You got to be yeah. hustling. You do. And you know what? I mean, you saw the in the beginning of the uh, your segment where I showed the thing I'm doing as a marketing thing with me standing up. Yeah. Literally. I shot. love that. I appreciate that. That's really me going. Like it took me like I don't know five minutes to blast out the uh, you know in what I was going to write, and then I and then I do what I call I, I do quick clip or news edit where I, I I came up with this thing where I take a lot of space out of my talk so it goes because you know in this day and age people's attention span is that of a gnat. So you got to be like, you know, moving this stuff and putting into be and all this other stuff because otherwise, if you take too long, people go yeah because of the advent of TikTok and, and, and Instagram, you know, little clips and all of the, um, you know, the matrix out there saying that if you don't tell me, Tyler, in five seconds what you want me to know, bye bye And that's what our industry has uh, grown into. Now, uh, there's a lot of people out there misusing it and using it badly and creating bad parts for their acting career. Cause I've seen some stuff where you're like, damn, that person just got a million views on that. And that's crap. Uh, but, <laughs> but you gotta give it to people that they're out there trying to do something to get noticed. Hey, if I would, by all means, I would uh, strip down to my speedo. I have one on, and I would, you know, run around naked in in in, in L.A. with the with the sandwich board if I could and not get arrested. So I commend people for doing that. Let's finish off with uh, again. I asked you for advice before, but let's finish off with you telling us uh, the different things you do, where we can get you, where we can find you. Because I didn't see a website. I saw your Instagram on there, but is there a place that the pig lives? that we might be able to push people so we can um, create an article and tell people how to get their stuff done the right way? Yes, absolutely. So you can find us at killthepigproductions.com. It's uh, simple enough. We're also on Instagram at KTP Productions. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Kill the Pig Productions. And uh, personally, if you just want to find out what I'm up to as an actor, uh, my name is Tyler Hampong. And uh, I'm on Instagram at Tyler Hampong. And um, yeah, those are, that's it. That's killthepigproductions.com. Visit us to, to check out our rates for headshots and self tapes and uh, actor reels. Uh, we and, love to work with you. And again, I just want to ask you, you do have packages that go, yeah, we're going to do <clears throat> this, this, and that. Um, and put these all together for your headshot. We'll give a little consultation. Uh, we'll do some scene stuff for a demo reel. And put you do you have packages? We have them individually itemized, but we can absolutely work with people to create something custom to what they need. Okay, financing available. Sorry, <laughs> I had to say. It. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, it, it's been a pleasure, Tyler, and and without a doubt, I know you. Don't you have a podcast? No, no, I don't. But oh. I have appeared on several podcasts over the I pandemic. I saw that. That's weird because I looked at your link, and it said, "Oh, maybe it's just podcast you've been on." Got it. Got yeah, it. I mean, with 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 the pandemic, I have been on more podcasts <laughs> this past year than I have ever been in my life. So that may be it. <laughs> hey, you know what? Hitting the podcast circuit is not a bad thing as an actor because look, no, if you're trying, no, no. by the way, little side note, if you are smart on Google, when you search up your name as an actor, if you've done a fair amount of stuff, you're going to see something on the right side called the knowledge panel. When you see that and you see your name in your picture, there's something at the bottom here. This is a tip for you. Go out and get it. You can click it and say, this is me. And it will allow you, in essence, sort of a Google verification, and you can actually get in there and change that. Because look, if someone's searching for you as an actor, and they come over here and they see someone else, or they see, because mine was on there, and it said that I was 74. Can I flip? Oh on? no! Can I flip people off on my show? Yeah. Um, so you know, I'm like, what? So I went in, I got the knowledge panel, and I fixed it because I'm only what 38. 
Anyway, um, but the point is, is that you can control uh, what you need to do. Uh, Tyler, I will definitely be asking you and knocking on your door again to have you come on as a sh- uh, on the show and, and do something else and talk oh, and you. give your pearls of wisdom if you're into it. Um, and for I sure. appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, it was a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Anything else you want to say? Uh, you have the final say so here. I just want to move you over to your single. Anything else you'd like to tell people at all? Um, I mean, I, I'm so thankful that you had me on here. I guess my last thought, it's just always something that rings around in my head because I love Rocky Horror Picture Show, but don't dream it, be it. One of my favorite quotes. I love it. I thought you were going to say that right now you're wearing garters and, uh, <laughs> and, and a teddy. I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> Damn. Uh, of course, I won't uh, stand up. <laughs> please, please do not. It's a it's a Zoom thing. Uh, of course, Tyler <laughs> M. Pong, uh, you, he's a filmmaker and author. You can get him at killthepigproductions.com. Uh, I really do appreciate you coming on the show. Hang in the wings. I'll talk to you for a second when we're done. But uh, thanks for hanging out with us, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, that was the show. Uh, I love being able to talk to people like Tyler and, of course, Jonathan from Big Apple Film Festival just because, look, we're in a business of passion. And um, if you're not waking up every day, and I mean this sincerely, look, I don't have to impress anybody. It's my show. Um, The fact is, is that if you're not waking up every day and thinking, oh my gosh, what can I do? And you don't get like little blah blahs in your arm and going, oh, this is cool. If you haven't figured out yet, just so you know, as a professional actor, director, producer, whatever, if you haven't figured out yet that the game is supposed to be as fun as actually doing it, then I have bad news for you. You're probably in the wrong business. In addition, if you can't use your equipment that's in front of you to be able to portray what you want to portray, uh, Tyler actually said it really well, is is that you come in saying, look, I got a problem. Like I have one. I spent 20 years as a professional comedian, Dick Van Dyke, uh, Jim Carrey falling over stuff, stupid. I was, I was before him. And the fact is, is that now because of my cowboy stuff, I, I kill people for a living in my films, most of them, uh, you know, the Netflix, the Amazon, so whatever. And so I'm having to reshift my sort of brand because people are like, oh yeah, well, you say a cowboy, you got to spin the guns and guns, the whips and whatever. Well, we have a choice. And when Tyler said it, he said it right, which is we're gonna, you're going to come in, tell us what you are and what you're seen as, and tell us what you want to be. Every single day, you have a chance to recreate yourself. And if you're spending your time just kind of going, yeah, uh, maybe I'll just do a TikTok, and you probably should get out of the business. Because you know what? We're standing in line with a billion and a half actors in the same role, and a billion of you probably aren't working really hard. And I hate to sound hardcore on you, but get out or get to work. And we're trying to help you with that here of course, on uh, our filmfestivallive.com. You can go to our website, our YouTube, our Facebook, get involved, ask questions because there are people that know things that you don't know and there's things that you know that we don't know and we want to know them. I'll see you next time. Hang out with you. We'll have fun. We'll bring someone in. I promise you'll, you'll learn if you want to. Bring a pad and paper next time. And for everybody under 20, Google pad and pencil. See you next time.